The views and opinions of this broadcast do not reflect the views and opinions of Armed Media, Unew Productions and its affiliates. Enjoy the show. I am Candice Harper, lovecoach.com, coming to you live from the beautiful heart of Chelsea. I teach and inspire audacious intimacy to powerful, professional, grown women who want real relationships from seductive singlehoods. More importantly, I help single city women over 35 who have given up on love, stand boldly in their purpose, stop getting ghosted, and create unconditional love. Happy Monday, everybody! We have a bunch of gorgeous, wonderful, rich, abundant ladies in the studio, so I'm really, really excited to talk about them, and I'm really excited to talk about our special guest tonight. But first, you might be listening to us on your TuneIn app, on your smart device, listening to Armed Radio, or you're in the garden on armedradioglobal.com. We're also on iHeartRadio, so if you have an Alexa, you can ask for candy. And for our streamers in the audience, we're also available on Spotify and Spreaker. If you want to catch us later, listen to us in your car. Or maybe you're live with us on the Facebook. You know, it's President's Day. So I know a, a lot of y'all did not have to go to work today. And so you sat around and you waited until Astro <laughs> Candy was coming on. So you could make sure that you could talk to us and be in the conversation. And I'm glad you're here. And we're going to wait until you trickle in. You know, you guys, I want to, um, we're going to have a very prolific conversation tonight. So I want to make sure that those of you, when you get here, you know what you're supposed to do. Everybody here is already a little bit prepped, but I'm going to talk about what the the structure is going to be for tonight, which is kind of a loose structure, I feel sure. like. Yeah. So anyway, like I said, I'm Candace Harbour Love Coach, and my talent is conversation. My passion is personal growth, and my purpose is to teach and inspire radical self-acceptance in myself and others so that we can all have our best possible love life. And that is why this is a conversation. We're not here to hand down a bunch of dating relationship rules or rights and wrongs. We're not here to shame your love situation. Our only intention is to create audacious intimacy, seductive singlehoods, and healthy relationships. So tonight and every Monday night, we're going to do what we do, which is have conversations that engage educate or enlighten all of us in the areas of love, sex, relationships, and vibrating high. And tonight's topic is right along the lines of vibrating high. How do we thrive in an insane world? Tonight, I brought a very, very special guest, Barbara Gilman, author of Whatever the Fuck It Takes. (laughs) I love that title. Whatever the Fuck It Takes, the unofficial guide for living successfully on planet Earth. Barbara Gilman has more than 30 years experience as a therapist and a coach. She is the founder of Success Strategies for Life, a certified access consciousness facilitator, developer of the Conscious Parenting for a New Paradigm educational series. Also, Barbara served as the director of family education for Neil Donald Walsh's Heartlight Education and the Center for Awareness. She is also the founder of the women's group Wild Women Shoes and Honey. <laughs> Barbara Gilman has been working with individuals, businesses, and groups for over 30 years, helping people uncreate, and she's going to talk about how to uncreate, the hidden agendas to their personal and business success and emotional freedom, essentially teaching the rules to the game of life. Miss Barbara, welcome. welcome. Yay. And I see Lee just joined us too. Hello, Lee is here on the Facebook Live. Barbara, tell us a little bit of personal stuff about yourself. I know I just gave your whole professional intro. But what do you want to say about yourself or to the people to say hello? Well, <laughs> I love what I do. Yeah. It's my greatest play. And uh, for me to be in the world and knowing that I can be a contribution to changing the consciousness of the planet mm-hmm. is very exciting. Yeah. Because we live we live um, on a planet where most of us do not know exactly what's going on. As a matter <laughs> of fact, mm-hmm. we were perpetrated with some really great lie, mm. which is why we're all sort of crawling on all fours. So when I get people and I just change that a little bit, give them some tools and a little, as I say, the language of consciousness so they actually understand 
who they are and how they create their reality. Yeah. Then you see people's lives changing, and that's my greatest joy. Ah, this is why I love Barbara. You guys know I talk about like creating your own reality and everything like that. And I and I love the concepts in your book, Barbara. Now I just want to warn those of you who are not used to the, the metaphysical and the spiritual conversation. Barbara goes there. And she's going to say what's on her mind and she's going to take us all the way there. So, you know, for some of us who aren't necessarily in this conversation yet, it can sometimes feel like, you know, what the hell is going on here? But I want you guys to ride with us, bear with us, trust us. You know, we always give you nuggets and something to take away with. And um, yeah, I think we should just jump in. The goal of today's show is to sort of... uh, uh, raise awareness about access consciousness, right? We want people to be able to walk away. Anybody who's out there looking for an easier life, this is a possibility, something new to learn, something new to be open to. Absolutely. Right? And, and the thing is, it's so easy because we work with like eight-year-old children the same way we work with adults. Yeah. And you know what? They get it before the adults. I'm sure they do because yeah. they don't have all that, those years of crap. Yeah, exactly. Right? Exactly. <laughs> right? Exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. No, it's true. So ladies in the audience, I've already, we have a couple new that have come in. The, the story for everybody else is be thinking about something that's sort of on your mind, something that's been a challenge, something that you wanted to overcome, that you want to work through, anything that comes up for you as we're in the midst of this conversation. Barbara's going to be talking to us a little bit about the concepts in the book. We're going to go through the different chapters so that we have a good idea of what it's about. And then if you have something, and I can guarantee you, especially ladies here, if you have something that's burning, somebody else out there has the same thing burning. Somebody else out there is, you know, dealing with the same thing. So you're not just sharing yourself. You're also offering something for someone else to sort of connect to. And then Barbara can offer maybe an action, an action tool. tool. Yeah, something to help Mm -hmm. ease through it. So you guys ready to dive in? Dive in. (laughs) Right? (laughs) I love it. Okay, so um, let's just go through the different chapters. So the very first chapter, chapter, wake up to the lie. Now, those of you who normally watch the podcast or listen, you know that Barbara's been a guest and you might know a little bit about about what she talks about. But let's talk about the waking up to the lie because I feel like you and I have had this discussion and it's it's very interesting. Talk to us about what that means. Well, basically... Here we are living on a planet and we come in and we start educating, you know, we're being educated. Mm -hmm. And the thing is that we're being educated in a lie. Mm -hmm. So just about everything that we are taught here is actually the opposite of what it really is. And so what's happened, and and I think we all can, you know, be in agreement that the world is not working now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, the question is, well, what can we be and do different? Mm. And it's time to retire the old way of living and the lie that was perpetrated on us. Yeah. And really getting out there and how what, whatever you know whatever you feel attracted to um, that resonates with you. You know, I looked my whole life. I I have been in. I was in the spiritual you know, world I started as a teenager. Mm -hmm. So I did everything that came along in those years. Then I found the world of energy and consciousness. And for me, that was where I really felt like this is it. This is going to change not only my life, but this is going to change the world. Yeah. But the thing is that when you realize everything that you have learned in your life. So let's, let's just look at a simple thing. Okay. So relationship. Mm -hmm. What is relationship? And everyone has their view. Now, especially for women, and I would think that maybe there's more women watching and listening. Relationship, when I was growing up, was Cinderella and Snow White. I mean, what we saw all those movies and our hearts were, oh, I can't wait till my prince comes. Yes. Right? Okay. The fairy tale. The fairy tale, the lie and the invention. Mm-hmm. And that's not what life is. But when you buy a lie, And then you build your world on that lie because you actually believe that's what it is. Why wouldn't you? Yeah. I mean, every book, every parent, every friend, I mean, everyone's living that lie. Yeah. So there you go. But then it doesn't work. Now, I have been in five major relationships and I'm best friends with four of them, which I think is pretty cool. (laughs) Now, the only the the only way the only way that that can be maintained is that you have to be conscious enough to get that part of the lie here 
is that you're going to get your relationship and you're going to get married and you have your three kids or 3.5 kids, right? And that's it. End of story. Like I mean, it's your... just going to work. Yeah. It's going to work. Everyone's going to be great. And that's it. Well, guess what? It doesn't work. Yeah. Because how could something work when it was a lie to begin with? Mm. So when the relationship starts falling apart, we have to make our partners wrong. We don't start, well, some people do start by making themselves wrong, mm. but everything is about being made wrong Yeah. until the relationship is so wrong that we have to get rid of it. Yeah. And then we have to tr create a new one. And the whole cycle keeps going over and over. But what is it, what if there's a different story here? What if there's a different way? And what if relationship is not what we thought? Mm. And so that's the main thing that, you know, that you want to look at in your life is what if everything that you believe is life, your business, your money, your body is really not what you were taught that it was yeah. or is. Or supposed to be. Or I feel like there's a lot of be. supposed to be. It's all supposed yeah. to be. Yeah. And when you can get to that place, everything in life starts to change. Yeah. Yeah. Now, when you say that, like what comes up for me around the lie and the lie of relationships is not just the fairy tale thing, but this idea that, that, you know, and that's probably why there's things like homophobia and stuff like that. This idea that there's only one way that a relationship is supposed to work. And there's only one way that your relationship path is supposed to be. Yes. I feel like that's part of what keeps people in that cycle of inadequacy. Absolutely. Is that this, you know, it's supposed to be this thing and whatever supposed to be is in, you know, that's in your family that you're taught. Yes. But that's life. Yeah. Everything, whether you're talking about business or you're talking about bodies or you're talking about money, everything here is one thing. Yeah. You know, it's so much easier to entrain people. Okay. Brainwash them. And it's only one thing they have to tell, tell them about. Yeah. So you have that one thing. And the one thing is not going to work. And then you make yourself wrong. And then when you feel so wrong, you make everyone else wrong. And it's just one generation after the other. So let's say parenting, mm -hmm. okay? Parents want to be right. Every the, the drug of choice here is to be right. God forbid we should be wrong. Yeah. And one of the things that when you're when you're working, like with me, or you're working with this body of work, that we talk about is what would it take to be as wrong and stupid as you could be? Mm -hmm. Are we going to talk? That's coming up too, oh, right? Yes, yes, <laughs> Being yes, wrong and well, stupid. Yes. Oh, yeah, Shakota. I'm already ready. Say hello to everybody. <laughs> How will you dismantle lie? Mm. Well, first you acknowledge it. First you're, you, you get to a place like, oh my God, that's true. It's, it's not a lie. It's never been that way. So then what else is possible? Yeah. Okay. So if we move that out of the way, then, okay. So what would relationship look like? And what if relationship looks like there's no time. So we were all basically brought up thinking that a relationship is supposed to last forever. But what if that's not true? Mm. Because think about it this way. What is the one thing that everyone on the planet, including the planet, does all the time, continuously. Change. Yeah. Thank you. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Now, we're not taught that. Yeah. We're basically pretty much taught, don't change. Yeah. You mean your Lock hair is exactly. this color? Lock when it. did you change your hair? Wasn't it a different color last week? week. <laughs> <laughs> so the first thing is change happens. Look yeah. at nature. Look at animals. When you start to just acknowledge that that change happens, then you have to look at relationship and then you have to say, well, if change happens, what is it going to take for me to allow my relationship to expand yeah. and have that space where change is actually good? It's not frightening because change is literally the scariest thing after death. Yeah. Okay. So what if we could change that? And so if you can change that, which is very easy if you're choosing for you and not against you, which in, on this planet we're taught to choose against us all the time. Mm -hmm. Now there's a whole the new space. There's a whole new platform called communion yeah. instead of relationship. Because actually relationship, the definition of the word relationship is the distance between two points. Mm -hmm. And that gets wider and wider as you stay together. Yeah. What if we could change that? What if... So we're talking about consciousness. That's basically everything that I'm about is consciousness. Now, what is consciousness? Consciousness is living 
with no point of view. You're in total allowance for whatever is happening in <coughs> any moment. Yeah. Now that changes everything right there. Uh-huh. Because that Especially allows... since we're raised with judgment and criticism. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And I think for those people who last week on, on the podcast we were talking and I had mentioned that, you know, right now the earth is in a situation that's not so great for mm-hmm. the earth. The mm-hmm. earth is not doing well. Okay, and the reason it's not doing well is because of the judgment that we hold. Mm. We hold it for ourselves first, and then we put it on everyone else, and then yeah. we put it on the earth, and we put it on everything. So what happens is we actually are the cancer cells of the earth. Mm-hmm. We are caring. Oh, she said for- that to me before, and I was like, oh, good Lord. <laughs> but it's, it's true in so many ways, we, right? Yes, we are yeah. killing it. Yeah. We are killing this planet <laughs> right? because we just are living in such judgment. Yeah. It's such a heavy energy. So what is the opposite of that? To live in total allowance. Mm-hmm. Where in each moment, okay, and, and you go for that, you got to work for that, yeah. okay, you're in total allowance of whatever is going on in that moment. Yeah. Okay? And now, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. you got to work for that. Because you know what I'm thinking about, Barbara? And this is to, you know, play devil's advocate of the conversation. Like, I get it. Like, I love the idea of allowance because for me, I was someone who was raised to judge and criticize and stress out and try to make things be what I want them to be. So I, you know, for me, this is like release. I don't have to, you know, control the external. I don't have to be in charge of all of it. But then I think about, you know, like when you say that, and as much as that resonates with me, I think about people who are in situations where, you know, there's violence in their situation or people who are in a war zone or people who are in places where, Allowance is like, uh, you know, the idea of, of not resisting what's happening is so completely foreign because, you know, maybe where I live is so scary or maybe where I live is so violent or, you know, yes. what do you okay. say for that? Okay, so that so that brings in some tools, you yeah. know, okay. And so I don't know if we mentioned, but the body of work that I facilitate is called Access Consciousness. Mm-hmm. It's taught in 174 countries. There's nothing that has so many people it, and the funniest thing is that the United States is the slowest growing. Mm. Okay. And <laughs> we're busy, that, we're what busy eating. Tell you? We're busy okay. eating our pain. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. And buying the lie. Yeah. And then perpetrating it on us. And then we're crawling on all fours. Mm. But the idea is that when something is not working in your life, the, the, the simplest thing to do and the greatest tool that I could give anyone and always do is asking questions mm. because questions are is an algorithm interrupt okay and the planet has been run on algorithms long story don't have to go there but the point is <laughs> it breaks everything that's stuck to make it very simple open yeah so for instance for instance you're saying well what about the person who's in that horrible relationship or you know what's the, this is going on and how do they handle it to just start at a very baby place okay Mm -hmm. a very beginning you just start when something comes up okay so whatever's going on in your life right now it's not working for you you don't feel good about it okay maybe you feel miserable about it maybe you're incredibly sad Mm -hmm. okay you and i know this is going to sound so simple and so ridiculous but trust me it will change your life if you work with it okay and you start to ask a question so What's right about this I'm not getting? You're in a relationship. It's not going well, whatever that is for you, okay? Whether it's the money, whether it's abuse, whether it's whatever, Mm -hmm. okay? What's right about this I'm not getting? Now, the way a question works is when you ask a question, and who are you asking the question to? You're asking the question to the universe. Molecules of consciousness, which Mm -hmm. is basically what we are, Mm -hmm. okay? When you ask a question... That which, the energy that matches the question, okay, will, ap- will come, will it, like it comes up and it brings you some magic mm. that you can change your situation. So if you're asking the question, what's right about this I'm not getting, okay? So the easiest one is you. Yeah. Okay, we start with us. And so let's say you get up in the morning and things aren't working well and you don't you, you feel like you're not good enough. I've done this so long, it's not working, but it's working for her, it's me. Yeah. Okay, 
I'm wrong. I didn't take this class or I didn't do this. And I, oh, I was, you know, man, my mom told me that I never would be anything, whatever. Okay, you stop right there because if you keep going, okay, <laughs> you're going down yeah. and you're going like down energetically. Spiral. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All you have to do is say, what's right about me? I'm not getting. Yeah. Okay. When you say that, that, that energy, those molecules go right. It's you're in the universe. It's right there. Yeah. The universe will send you matching energy. So within an hour or by the end of the day, I promise you, you will get, let's say a call from a friend of yours and she's going to say, Candace, thank you so much. That podcast that you did last week, it changed my life. Mm. Okay. Now, do you think you're going to feel different after yeah. that person says mm -hmm. that to you? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's as simple as that. And yet it can change your whole life. What's right about me? I'm not getting. Yeah. Okay. What would it take for this to change? How can it get any better than this? Simple little questions. And when you start working with them, you're going to see that your life starts to change. And yeah. now you don't feel powerless. You don't have to go, as I say, we live in an insane asylum because everything, <laughs> everything that we believe is true about reality of how we create relationship, how we create money, yeah. how we create our bodies. It's all the opposite. Yeah. As I said for over 30 years, if you do the opposite of what people tell you to do, you have You'll a better great. chance. <laughs> yes, yes, really. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. so you, so I say, you know, what I say is like, and, and, you know, I, I'm meaning this to be funny. Okay. But I call it the insane asylum. So mm -hmm. I say to you, if your friend was going to see her cousin who lives in the insane asylum, mm -hmm. okay, for their birthday. And she said, listen, I know we're going out to dinner, but would you mind coming with my with me because I have a present for my cousin? Mm. And you say, again, a joke here. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'll go with you. I've never been to one. I'll see what it's like. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So there you go. She goes to talk to her cousin and give the gift. Okay. And you're sitting waiting for her. And all of a sudden, an inmate comes over. You know, with the little white thing with their mm -hmm. okay. straight jacket. Now. Let me ask you a question. Would you go over to that inmate and say, excuse me, but I have a tax issue. Could you help me with my taxes? <laughs> no. Now, it sounds insane, right? But we do it every day. We go to what we call professionals. Mm. But if the professionals were educated in the lie, then what are you really getting? Mm. You're getting more of the lie. Mm -hmm. And so it's this continuous Mobius strip of everything not working because you're having lie upon lie upon lie and you can't get out. You know what that stuck. makes me think of? Like it, it, what it sounds to me is like sort of a remedy for, for the instant gratification kind of culture that we have. Like, I feel like along the lines of what you're saying, like believing this lie that there's something that's broken, something needs to be fixed. What's wrong with me? What can I do about it? And then not that I don't believe in, uh, uh, science and not that I don't believe in, you know, uh, medicine and and you know what has been discovered and and what's possible as far as that's concerned and not to believe me. but <laughs> well on some level yes, i do know that, it's a, level. that yes. it's a business and so a lot of times like i look at my parents who are you know they're getting up in their years and they're taking like 60 to 70 medications between the two of them you know some of the medications are just to take care of the symptoms of other medications <laughs> because it's about fix it fix it okay. fix it fix well, it right don't start me on that because i'll have to say things that I don't want to go way out there. We don't want to go way out. But what I'm saying is that what what you're saying, as far as um, asking a question and a question that opens up a possibility, maybe like surrendering a little bit, as opposed to going right into I need to fix this, I need to fix this, I need to fix this. Yes, I could see how that could be a mental remedy for just not being in instant gratification mode. And all those things we do to try to fix ourselves that are so resistant and controlling and sometimes hurtful to ourselves, we might make a different choice if we just open it up like, you know, what is right about me as opposed to what's broken about me. Exactly. Yeah. And the thing is, okay, so, <clears throat> so I have many tools when I work with people. Mm -hmm. And one of the tools, actually, I, I have so many people that I work on the telephone. And they go onto my teleconference line and it gets recorded. Now, I'm using an energy tool, which is asking a question. When you ask the question, as I was saying, the energy that holds the limitation 
of what's going on in your life is now brought to the surface. Mm -hmm. So if you're telling me that you feel wrong, okay, and nothing is working in your life, I might say to you, what's the value of you always choosing that you're wrong rather than acknowledging your greatness, mm, okay? Yeah, yeah. Now, when I ask that question, everything that is holding the wrongness of you in place, in your energy, in your body, a door opens up, and that energy just comes up to be changed mm. if you're choosing. Yeah, yeah. Then we have something that's called a clearing statement, which is just, it's, if I said it, it would make no sense. <laughs> the short version of it is pod pac, uh -huh. which stands for a point of creation where the energy was first solidified, where you bought that lie, yeah. you stuck it in you. And now it's yours. And some things they call that the genesis of identity. Exactly. Like when you first were like, you know, what the fuck? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> that's started like putting the layers. Yes. So that's, yeah. the, that's the point of creation where you chose against you and now it's been working. Yeah. And it keeps cutting you and cutting you and cutting you. Okay. Um, so once you have that, you cannot change because you keep on, it's like taking a knife and you keep on sticking it yeah. in yourself. Yeah. When... When you use, and this is something that I teach all my clients, and it's so simple, you know, if an eight-year-old child could do it, I think we all could do it. And then you say this little magical statement. Mm -hmm. And what happens is all of the energy that has to do with you making yourself wrong, that you are willing to give up in this moment, and it's not mental, okay? You can't, like, say, oh, I'm going to let go of five gallons of my wrongness. Mm -hmm. It just occurs. Yeah. Okay. All of that energy, a door opens up and that energy just leaves. Mm. And the more that you do it, okay, so let's say I'm on, a, I'm on the phone with someone, a client for half an hour, an hour. In that time, they're getting a lot of this. Okay, yeah. I'm asking a lot of questions. Well, what, what else is possible? What can you do and be different that might change the situation? Okay, mm -hmm. and then I do, okay, so blah, blah, blah. And then the energy comes up and all of a sudden, that much of the energy where they couldn't look to see something different and new because they were stuck in what was old, starts to come up. Mm -hmm. And by the end of the day or, or the next day, anything could happen. Yeah. They could look at a, at a magazine they've seen for years and take a class that they always wanted to take, but they never took it. And in that class, something in their life changes. Yeah. So these are tools that are so simple, but they're energy tools. And I, as I say, it's, you know, coming from being a therapist, you know, um, if you're not working with energy right now, if, you, if you're a therapist, if you're a coach, whatever, if you're just a person who wants to change, you're on a slow boat to China. Mm. And I'm not making that, I'm not making that wrong mm -hmm. because there's lots of things out there, you know, I mean, Law of Attraction has been around for years and it's still fantastic yeah. because most people still don't know they create their reality. Yeah. However, I like to work with the people who've been there already, mm -hmm. okay? Because we have to have a group of people who are there who want to go even further. Yeah. That's who I work with, yeah. okay? So for those people, these are the tools for now and to bring us into a new future. Mm -hmm a future that works. So we're not buying lies anymore yeah. where we actually could take our stuff in five minutes, in 10 minutes, if we're choosing, we could change it. There's a new possibility. And what else is next? Yeah. Go ahead, Jamie, Can I please. Share something? Yes. I don't want to but, <laughs> no, go ahead. Um, I want to, I want to share that I took a class with Barbara and it was the excess bars class. And I've been really excited to share it with people. And, um, I was talking to my mother who lives in the Midwest and it was just over the phone, but she was having a hard day. She was struggling with some old patterns. And I just, I thought, well, maybe I'll, I'll try this. I'll ask her a question. And then I, I said the words and I couldn't believe it, but she actually felt sensation in her implant band back here, which is like the first area that you work on um, when you're doing this. And she said, yeah, I, so weird I've never had that sensation in this particular part of my head and and so um she felt a lot of relief just in one phone conversation with me where I was yeah. asking her these questions and I I think that for me and my experience with it 
um, I also felt huge relief. You know, I, I walked into the class feeling a lot of tension and, you know, I was sort of panicking about my life, you know, and, and then after I received a session, it's, it's just energy work. Um, I felt completely calm. I felt like my worries had just dissipated. Um, and yeah, I saw my therapist the next day and I was like, I have no worries at all. <laughs> I'm all and, and the thing is, you know, when you hear that, it's so hard to believe. Mm -hmm. You know, when I speak, it's not that I want to sell something, but I'm so excited because I know that this works like yeah. nothing. I, I mean, when I tell you, if you mention almost anything that's out there that has to do with change, I've taken it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but yeah. I've never found anything. This is magic. Mm. Okay. And so it's, we have a possibility in our life. And it doesn't have to be this body of work, and it doesn't have to be me. But the thing is for everyone to know that possibly everything in your, not everything, I don't want to say that, but what if X amount of stuff in your life that you've been working on is not exactly what you thought that it was, mm. okay? So it's like saying, if you, want to, if you want to paint your walls, and someone says to you, okay, take the spatula, that you do your pancakes with, and you'll and this is how you paint your wall. Is it really going to work? Mm. No. no, it's 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 not going to be easy. It's going to be frustrating. Yeah. You're going to have lines. It's going to drip all over you, right? It's just as simple as that. Mm -hmm. If you're looking for something that's simple and that works, okay, then ask the universe. Mm -hmm. Okay, you don't have to come to me, but just put it out to the universe, okay? You want to say God, God is all that is. Whatever whatever your words are, it's still molecules of consciousness. Mm -hmm. What would it take for this to be better than I could imagine? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What would it take for me to have a life that's ease, joy, and fun? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like the creation of possibilities. Exactly. Yeah. You know, one of the things people, you know, in this reality, the main thing we work for is money. Yeah. And the reason we do that is because the money was taken away years ago. Mm. So now what happens is we're like beings crawling on all fours and on our stomachs trying to survive. Yeah. That was, I always say that. Like we're in survival mode. We just are. Just like working and, and, for and the next chapter. Absolutely. And, like, and that yeah. was a manipulation and I'm not going there. Okay? <laughs> but the thing is... What if, what if there's a way to change that? And you know the quickest way to change it? Mm. The energy, remember, energy creates everything. The energy that money is, is the same energy as play and joy. Mm. So think about business, mm. okay? When I work with businesses, my platform is this. When you have your people come into your office, okay, whether you're the CEO, the president, or whatever your title is, you want them, let's face it, you really want them to be your slave. Mm. Okay, You want them to do all the work. People today, the younger people, have a job that 10 years ago probably had 10 people who had that job. Mm. Okay, And so in order to do that, they expect you to leave your life outside the door. So if your wife or your husband has cancer, if your children, if one of your, you know, if one of your children has... Some, an accident or something. An accident, like okay, and they can't walk or whatever, or the, your other your spouse lost their job, or your mother in law is dying. I mean, what life? If life is going on, these people, all people, cannot leave your baggage at the door. It does not happen. Mm -hmm. I don't care how the CEOs and the and the presidents and whatever wanted to. It doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. So this is what happens in the business world. Okay, what if? You as the CEO, God, gee, what would it be like if I actually allowed the people that I have in my company to have an outlet to change everything that's not working so they have an ease in their life? Mm -hmm. So everything doesn't seem so big and so horrendous that they have ease and joy and a different way of looking at life. Do you know what would happen? Their money would go up. Mm -hmm. Their sales would become tremendous. The people who come into work would be happy and smiling. They would have less days where they have to call in sick because they're so 
nervous and they're so filled with tension that they can't even make it out of the door. Yeah. This is living in a new paradigm. We have to look at our people and we have to say, what can I do for my employees that would give them a space, an expanded space where they could live in joy and ease, that they don't have to feel that they're being attacked when they walked in the door and God forbid they should be fired from the measly amount of money that they're getting because they're working for 10 people. Yeah. All of this has to change. I feel like there is, like, when I think in terms of, like, entrepreneurship, especially since right now there's a big wave of female entrepreneurship. Yes. I feel like, because that I, is the change. Tell me if you if this sounds true for you. Like, in what you're saying, I'm, I'm hearing, like, the difference between a masculine energy approach to work and how work should work compared to a feminine energy approach where it's a much more nurturing, let's take care of each other, communal kind of thing. And that's yes. not to say that, you know, men don't have feminine energy and women right. don't have masculine yes. energy. I'm just saying, you know, the, 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 uh, the nature, the, yes. the, 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 um, what's the word I'm looking for? The, um, what's, what's the word for like the typical, uh, uh, not stereotypes, but like the typical attributes of something like the typical attributes of masculine energy right. is do it, do it right. anyway. Fuck your feelings, like make it happen. Right. Whereas the typical attributes of feminine energy is like, you know, let's take care of everyone. Yes. Let's... But, but if you look back in the last years when, when women started to really come and move ahead, not just the secretaries. Mm. They believed that they had to have that masculine energy. Yeah, yeah there was and a it's I almost did that when as, I had a day job. Yes, and so they totally almost that felt that they can't walk in as the feminine. They have to walk in and be the masculine. And that is what went wrong there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because then you're part of the problem and not the solution. Yeah. Now that's changing. And yes, you do need that feminine energy. Yeah. So it's it's a it's a question now of retraining everyone to see what is it that would actually work and create a win win for everyone. Mm. And that's going back to relationship. Okay. That's what allowance. That's what consciousness is being in total allowance with no point of view. Which means you're not wrong. You're not going to be wrong in my world. I might disagree. We might we might see two different ways of doing something, yeah. but you're never going to be wrong. It's going to be, oh, okay, that works for you. Okay, so right. whether you're my significant other and you're saying, well, I want to go fishing this week yeah. or I want to go roller skating. In the old paradigm, it's like you went because you thought you had to, because you had to be together and you had to be like this, but you're not happy. And then it's going to come up and then you'll probably have a fight, right? <laughs> What if you don't have to be together 24-7? <laughs> what if you can There's go that. where you, what you're doing, you and I can, I can go... My husband passed away for 20 years. I was my own person. He was his own person. And I said, the reason that we're together for 20 years, it's very hard to do, especially going through your 20s with somebody, is because I live my own life. Exactly. He lived his own life, but we respect each other. Yes. And we had our family time as well, but it was respect. I mean, I wouldn't just, like, leave to Arizona. I'd be right. like, hey... I wouldn't ask permission either. I would pretty much say, I want to do this. Does it conflict with anything that you really have right, going on? Right. And if it did, I would be like, I would choose. Is that important to me or it's not important to me? If it's not important to me, you don't need me there, honestly. Right. I'm going to do what I have to do and vice versa. Yes. You know? And in and that, that case, successful. you're yeah. happy yeah. and he's happy. Yeah. And then you actually have a communion that works. Yeah. And then you have children who see, oh, wow, my parents really get along well. It's not like my friend's parents. My God, they never speak. Yeah. They're never together. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, it's that, it's that expectation. It's so funny because I like I have avoided talking about this. But I had a conversation with my sister who was very angry with me because I tend to be an advice giver. She comes to me with problems. I tend to be an <laughs> advice giver. You come to me with your problems. I'm going to be the solutions girl. And she hates that. She's like, be my sister. But what it made me think of is how we do this to each other, where it's like we decide what the standard is of what someone else is supposed to be in our lives. And we get mad at them if they don't meet the standard or we insist that they somehow meet it. And I feel like that's what happens so many times, especially in romantic relationships. Yes. Because we learn it from family, right? Yes, it's like we, you're not doing it the way I want you to do it. But again, it all goes back to the, to the lie yeah, that was yeah. created that we bought and it's just perpetrated from one generation to another to another it's my joke about the ham at thanksgiving where the little girl sees her mother uh, um 
you know, or her grandmother cutting off the ends of the ham and puts it in the thing. She says, Grandma, why did you cut off the ends of the ham? Mm -hmm. Okay, or maybe it's a mother. And she says, I don't know. Go ask Grandma. <laughs> That's what it is. So she goes to ask yeah. Grandma. And Grandma says, I don't know. Go ask Great Grandma. And we can go back a thousand <laughs> yeah. years. Yeah. And then finally, when she gets to the last one who's alive, she says, because I didn't have a pot to put that was big enough to put in the ham. <laughs> <laughs> so it became just Exactly. So this is what we do. Yeah. We just yeah. keep taking yeah. what doesn't work and passing it generation after right. generation. And that's why the earth is dying. Yeah. And so the question is, what if we can just, ch what, what if we're willing mess. to change? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, right. What if we're willing to embrace something that's new? Yes, mm -hmm. it's different. And different has been made scary here. But what if different is an adventure? Yeah. What mm -hmm. if it's fun? What if it's creative? What if it's like, wow, okay, my life is going to work in a way it's never worked before. And as I was saying with the business, the energy of joy and play is the same energy of money. Mm. Not doing. They want you to believe that the more work, that you, you put do. Time, you got to work harder yes, and harder exactly. and harder. Hustle, hustle, hustle. And it's just the opposite <laughs> yeah. because you know what do-do is, right? Okay. <laughs> so if you have more joy, and I always say to my clients, when you go away on a vacation, I, I saw this like 100 years ago. Okay? Mm. When you go away on a vacation, do you ever realize that a client who's been waiting to come to see you, but they never did, all of a sudden will say, hey, you know what, I'm ready for the what? Or the check that you've been waiting for that they said they would give you that hasn't come, comes while you're away on vacation. You're away. Yeah. Because you're having joy, because you're having play. Yeah. So what if, if we take into businesses that whole concept? Huh. What if you allow all of your employees, okay, to have fun when they're there, mm. to be in the energy of creation, to allow them. It's like, well, instead of you coming to me and saying, basically, boss, what should I do? I'm going to ask you, what do you know? Mm. Yeah. Like let you be what? in your zone of genius. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. If we start doing that change and giving everyone the freedom to be who they are. Now, first, we have to find out who we are because <laughs> right. we bought the lie of who we are not. Yeah. And so first, you have to get out of that. Mm. But once you move that aside and say, wow, I can't believe that I'm greater than I ever thought that I was. And you have the courage to say it. Mm. Okay. Rather than saying, oh no, I'm just small and pathetic. I don't know that much. No. Are you kidding? I am great. Yeah. Okay. I am creative and I am brilliant. Yeah. Bring it on. Yeah. And then when you start to change that energy, everything is going to change. Yeah. The planet is going to change. It's going to survive. And again, we're going to be working with tools that are so simple that things will start changing quicker and quicker. Mm. And it's going to be amazing what's possible. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> Barbara, you make it sound so simple. <laughs> but it is. It is. I, yeah, I mean, yeah. I promise you, it is that simple. Yeah. I mean, if I could teach a 10-year-old the same way I would teach you, it's simple. Yeah. So what is this work called? Access Consciousness. And um, so you have you have the book. Is there a well, class? This is my, yes. yes. <laughs> I'm gonna get that <laughs> Everybody's gonna know exactly how to get the karma for sure. So um, here's the thing that I'm thinking. I'm thinking about all the people out there who are like uh, in situations, and I even know a lot of people who are in situations where they have these high pressure jobs, where it's like they're expected to perform. It's demand, 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 demand. So, you know, what, what's something you can give those people out there to just give them a little bit of access into, like, you know, how do I even begin to think in terms of, because I have a very good friend, uh, you know, she's my power lesbian friend. She's like, you know, very smart. And she is like a, a very masculine energy work person. You know, she knows exactly how much money she makes every month and how much she needs to live the way she wants to live. She knows exactly <laughs> what she needs to do in order to do that. She gets done, you know, it's very like, no nonsense in that way. But she also is someone who sometimes gets really stressed out and it shows up in her body. Okay. So what well, would you say? Well, the thing is, like everything that? you just said, okay, is, quote, the old paradigm. Yes. Because that's what she's been in trade to, to know, to do, to that. But that, yeah. that structure, okay, form and structure. Form and structure kills, mm. okay? You want to be in creation energy which has no form and structure. Yes, it has a little bow of order, 
but it's pure creation. And when you're in pure creation, then you become a walking, talking question. Mm. So again, it's like she think when you're in that space of structure, I know this is the way to do it, and I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it quickly, whatever. But what if that worked here and here? But what if in this case, it's like you have children, you have five kids. Uh, can you parent everyone exactly the same? They're all different. Yeah. So you have to be able to be the space that can always change. Mm. And again, question is one of the amazing things. You know, it's like, I know it's too, it's too simple to, to put your head around, but what can I be and do different here? So you yeah. have a new project, okay? What can I be and do here that would create the outcome that we're looking for yeah. without knowing what the outcome is yeah. because it's beyond this reality. You see, the way we live is we're always looking for a result, mm -hmm. okay? Right. And what is a result? A result can only be from the past. Mm -hmm. How would you know it's a result, yeah, right? Yeah, no, I agree with that. So we look like everything for, is like informed by the past, mm -hmm. which is yes. Like, Exactly. Crazy making. Which is why, again, <laughs> yeah. it doesn't work. Yeah. Who cares about what happened in the past? Do you want to eat the same thing you always ate? Do you want to have the same clothes? Do you want to have the same... Well, I don't take personal. I'm not going to go there. <laughs> <laughs> but my point is, you don't want to look for a result. Yeah. You want to be in the energy of creation of what else is possible that I never even thought could be possible. Yeah. This is, yeah, yes, progress. this is what yeah. creates the change that we are looking for that will actually allow the earth to exist. Yeah. When you start coming from that place, everything changes. Yeah. So again, it's like, I look for those CEOs, those presidents, those whatever, those people who are looking to coach other people. Okay. The people who are going to touch a lot of people, teach them these tools and then everything changes. And then they each individual person here takes it into their world and that changes. Mm -hmm. And this is, this is what this time on the planet is about. It's about expanding everything that's possible that we don't even know is possible, mm -hmm. but you have to be like willing in the exploration. Yes. You yeah. have to be willing to allow change to come in. Yeah. That's the biggest part. No, it's true. I want to say one thing. Yes. Um, so my background's in trauma work. So I did psychotherapy and drama therapy with trauma survivors. And, you know, the main thing that I learned was that when you have a trauma, your thinking can become very rigid because you're in survival mode. So it's either right or wrong, right? So this black and white thinking doesn't actually serve us after we've survived the trauma and we can get locked into these patterns of thinking so hard that we really limit our joy. And so one of the goals doing this trauma work that I did, which involved embodiment and play was to become more flexible around your traumatic memory so that you could approach life in a more flexible, open way. And I think when it comes down to it, an another simple way to kind of see this work is that, if you're feel if you're looking for an answer, that's something definitive. Mm. And so that that's again like black and white thinking. And what does that do to your body? Well, for me, it makes my body really tense and I get a little hunched over mm -hmm. and I'm not actually open to other possibilities. So asking questions is something new for me. And I and I've really kind of got, gotten a lot of um new information from it, right? Because in the past, I was really looking for an answer. And so I would, I, I would maybe ask a question of the universe, but then I would be looking for the answer. But now I'm not. And so actually, more stuff is happening for me. And I think, you know, if you think about it between, you know, in your body, if you think about, is your body tense? Or is your body relaxed? What would you rather be, right? Mm. And so living in this question is much more freeing than trying to seek an answer or be given an answer or a solution or whatnot. Yeah, that's Absolutely. true. Cause that's such a source of stress, like being so attached to an outcome or needing a yes or a no, like a yes. magic eight ball. Like that is such a source of, I'm someone who, you know, for a long time stressed out so much because I, I needed things to be so definitive rather than, and, you know, going back to the idea of asking a question, that's, it's basically surrendering. It's, it's releasing. Yes. It's like, 
you know, I don't have to know all, where all the pieces right. need to go. And so what you are talking about and what you're talking about is structure. Mm. And structure kills, mm. it chokes. Yeah. And so a very, very quick, also simple tool that I will give you is interesting point of view. I have this point of view. Mm. Everything is simply a point of view. So when something is going on in your life in this moment, and it brings up anything other than ease, joy, fun, play, okay, all you have to do is say, interesting point of view, I have this point of view. Isn't it interesting that I'm getting mad at this person because she doesn't have the same belief about whatever that I do? Yeah. Isn't that ridiculous? Mm -hmm. I mean, everyone can't have the same idea, and yet I'm, I'm mad at her. Yeah. As soon as you say that, remember, all, all of these tools are energetic. So as soon as you say, interesting point of view, I have this point of view, it starts to take the structure that you're holding on this person and it starts to take the molecules and go like this. And all of a sudden, what you're talking about, that irk, yeah. is literally going to change. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have this peace <laughs> come over you. And now... It's like, oh, oh, it's you. I didn't realize. I love you. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, like I'm not so attached to what I'm you're saying. So I'm not so insane that again. I have to go like this to you. It's yeah. like, oh, interesting point of view. That Candace has her own point of view. So, um, are you a, are you against goals? Goals. That's a great, I love that because you know what, Shakota, like what she's touching on is something that came up in my mind too, because when you say structure, I want us to make a distinction about that because there is this, you know, like the idea of setting a goal or deciding what you want to create. And then there's also the structure of, let's say, time and being in integrity with yes. what you say you're going to okay, do. So I'll give so you a very quick, let's whatever. make the distinction yes. between. So right? goals, goals can be a little bit too much structure. Hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what. So one of the things, okay, so for instance, I'll, I'll give you, and then you can sort of translate it. Um, I work with, at a, most creative people are the people that would find this work. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm not going to go into the why of it, but that's what occurs. So I work with a lot of writers, okay, um, or playwrights or whatever, where you, or designers, I used to be a designer, mm -hmm. um, where you get this whatever you want to call it, this moment of awareness of something, a book. Uh, when I used to, when I used to design homes, I would, when, when I was in school, I had to do a whatever and I'd go to sleep. And in my dream, I would see the house that I just designed and where the walls have mm -hmm. to be and whatever. And then I would go to my drafting table and I would do that. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> so when you have an idea about something, Okay, and this is great, especially for writers and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Most people, when you get up in the middle of the night and you have that idea, it's like, oh, my God, I got to start doing it right away. And then let's say you do. And here you are trying to write this poem, write, do this painting, do this whatever. It's just not working. Mm -hmm. Then you get frustrated. Then you get angry. <laughs> then you tear it up, and it's gone, and it will always be gone. This is how it really works, mm -hmm. okay? When you have an idea, or you could say a goal, what you want to do is you want to, this is going to sound funny, but it's molecules and that's all the, and, and that's all, that's intelligence. That's all you have to do is say, let's say to this book. Mm. Okay. Cause you could talk to anything. Are, are you ready to be birthed now? Mm. Is this the time for me to write you, to paint you, to whatever? Mm. If you get a yes, go full steam ahead. But if you get a no, which would be like a heavy feeling, so mm -hmm. a yes would be light and fluffy. Mm -hmm. So is Expansive. it time to write you now? Yeah. Expansive and light and fluffy. Is it time to write you now? Heavy contracted. Okay, so no. When would be a good time? And then the first thing that comes in, let's say three years, get a book and write down your every idea that you had so far this night and put a date in your thing, okay, like on the calendar in three years on this date, or yeah. ask the creation energy of the book to let you know when it's time. Mm -hmm. It will change your life. Because this way, 
all of the things that come up as the creation energy that you think are supposed to be done now, because who would think what I'm saying, right? Mm -hmm. Sounds crazy. Mm -hmm. Okay, unless you're watching the Walt Disney <laughs> movie. Um, you'll try them, it won't work, it won't and work. then you're gonna make yourself wrong. I'm not creative. Mm -hmm. I, I can't do this. I'm not good at it. I mean, these people have all bestsellers or, or paintings that are in the gallery, yeah. and mine, I throw on the floor. Yes, but if you <laughs> would paint it next year, it'll be in you know the top gallery and wherever. Mm -hmm. So there's always another possibility, and usually the possibility that you think will work will not work because it was created in the insane asylum. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, Barbara. Wait, we, we are at 857. You know, this goes by so fast. Barbara, wow. you're amazing, honey. You're going to have to come back. You know this, right? Well, of course I'll come back. <laughs> <laughs> I love what you're talking about. I love the way that you put it down. I want to just say hi to all the people that came in on the Facebook Live. Angela, Brandon, Ed, Denise, Kevin, Lisa, and Lorraine. And also, Barbara, I want you to have an opportunity to tell everybody who's interested in Access Consciousness how to find you or how to find Access Consciousness and um, definitely your book. Where can I get your book? If you I can want to buy get your my book? book at Amazon, um, probably the easiest place, unless you want to come and find me. But my name is Barbara, spelled like Streisand, although I don't sing like her, unfortunately. So that's B-A-R-B-R-A, Gilman, G-I-L-M-A-N. And it's barbaragilman.com. You could order it from there, but it's easier to go to Amazon. Saves me work. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and what, what I would basically say is go on my website and look at the videos. Just go through it. And if it touches you, if it resonates with you, give me a call. I, I do classes all over. I travel. If you put a group of people together, I go. Um, I do monthly classes. They're mm -hmm. totally life changing, as you heard from right here. And this woman right here is going to take the next one. Oh yes, uh, I am. I yes, am. Yes. <laughs> I'm like that woman. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I am. Most definitely. And um, you know, if if you even have just a tiny little bit of gee, what what if what she's saying is really real? What if she's yeah. not like crazy or she's whatever? <laughs> I mean, yeah. why not? Try it. Try it out. Yeah, yeah. try yeah. it out. You know, if you don't like it, you don't have to do it. But what if your whole life changes? And then what if you become like this lovely lady right now is walking, is going around doing everybody's bars. She's in my bars. Okay. Fantastic. And yeah. so she's changing the world already. And yeah. so anyway. There's also a great part in the book that totally resonated with something that I said a week before I read the book about the distinction between judgment and observation. And I love that part. So just for that alone, get this book. If you're feeling, like Barbara said, if you're feeling any sort of pull towards it or it's resonating, heed the call and right. see where it takes yeah. you. Exploration, right? Right. Read the book. That's the cheapest thing. You can right. start $15, get the book. But then get with, I think, get with you too. Yes. Is, is, yes. Yeah. yeah. And, and if going. you're really interested and you want to give me a call, it'll, you know, you'll get to me through my website. I'm open. I'm, I'm just delighted for anyone who's willing to change their life and change the world. Yeah. I mean, and it's not anti-religion for though. I got a lot of Christians yes. out there. Don't yes. worry. No, it's it has, not nothing, it has nothing to do with any, it's all the oh, same. We're going out by armed radio global. Bye. Never forget that you're a love machine. If you ever start to feel like you're not getting enough, just make more and ask for candy. I love you guys. Bye, audio. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> and those of you on the Facebook Live, thank you for joining us. Thank you so much, Barbara Gilman. And thank you for being the person who is bringing all of these amazing possibilities to all of these people. Oh, thank you. I feel like, you know, I don't know. I feel purposeful about it. It makes me feel you good. Should. <laughs> you should. Right? I own it. <laughs> Come on, honey. And thanks to all the ladies in the room. My James, who's always here, tried and true. I love you so much, James. And Kenya, who's always here, tried and true. Shakova, who's brand new. And Debbie Lean In, who's brand new. And Janelle Lean In, ladies. And just say hi to everybody on the Facebook Live. Thank you, Lee. I see you, my darling, giving us the, he's giving us the hang 10 and the kiss. Thank you, Facebook Live. I love you guys. And I'll talk to you next Monday. Next Monday, we got Lisa Wang from She Works. We can do some female entrepreneurship stuff. So I'll talk to you guys soon and have a great week. Bye. 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 Bye now.